Hi guys and welcome to my review of the Tenai 5 P1 Max 2. Um, this is the latest version of the Giant Panda, as it's known. Uh, an IM that uh, originally came out in late 2021, early 2022, when the whole uh, fever for uh, planars was beginning. It was a time dominated by the likes of the uh, 7Hz uh, Timeless uh, and the Lecture S12 both with their particular little uh, uh, nuances in terms of how the sound was tuned one uh, not as not as bright in the in the in the in the higher frequencies the other one a little bit brighter one with a little bit less bass the other one with a little bit more bass uh, it, it, it was it was they they had their own flavor going there um obviously completely different prices that uh, we're talking about that the, the timeless was just over two hundred dollars um, the lecture the s12 was a little bit cheaper and that was one of the reasons why it, it was able to cause some damage as well because the, the cheaper price and a performance which was as equal if not even better and in my opinion actually better than than the timeless um, it, it made for for uh, you know it, it was going to be a success end of story uh, the P1 Max, the original one, uh, followed then a second wave of, um, came during, a, a, let's say, a second wave of, of uh, planars that initially uh, were released after the, the Timeless and the uh, S12. Uh, we had the likes of the TRN Kirin, uh, we had the, the Muse, um, Muse Hi-Fi, we also had, uh, more or less around the same time, we had the Raptgo Hook X come along, uh, and a little bit later we had the Tang Zhu. But anyway, the P1 uh, Max uh, did its own thing. It had a, a different tuning. It was more of a neutral tuning. Everything sat within a window of more or less 60 dBs. Uh, and the reality is, uh, I, I think myself and uh, only a handful of other people really appreciated it for what it was. Um, because, you know, we always have this thing, oh no, it's, it's the, the BA timbre or the planar timbre or the planar uh, sound and this and that. And, because the P1 Max was tuned in the manner in which it was, it was tuned, you didn't straight away get that perception of it being a, a, a planar fully. Uh, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't uh, ha unnecessarily uh, bright or harsh or anything. Everything was just very smooth, very mellow. Uh, and it was quite power hungry. I mean, it could take quite a bit of power. And when, once you gave it power, it, it, you know, it came alive and, 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 and Honestly, it was a fantastic IEM. Still to this day, one of my favorite uh, planar IEMs. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I've got five of them. I know. Don't, please don't, don't, don't. Uh, you know, this is a disease that I have. Anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on. Uh, the P1, uh, the P1, the original P1 Max. Uh, subsequently, uh, and I say this because of the number of P1 Maxes that I have. Uh, I think underwent a slight retune, uh, and. Uh, the tuning continued being uh, interesting and, and playing well, but it became more like the other planars that were being uh, uh, that were being made, that were available, and and it lost a little bit of that uniqueness that it had. Now we have the P1 Max 2, okay, uh, and I have to admit that when I initially looked at the pictures. I was expecting, uh, because of the way the pictures were taken and everything, I was kind of expecting a, 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 a little bit different look, a more, a more wow factor to that look. And when I show you the IEM now, in a second you'll understand what I mean. And the reality is it's basically the same shell. I would say it's 99% the same shell and just the faceplate has been changed. Okay. It's in essence that. This is the box, uh, very simple, um, uh, you know, appearance, um, very much that Tenai Fi kind of look. Um, uh, debatable whether or not, okay, fine, uh, the giant panda motif and so on. Um, you know, I, I kind of get stuck yeah, between a rock and a hard place. Is this for children or is this for... I, I sometimes struggle to understand a little bit the marketing um, tendencies of, of, of some brands. But anyway, it is what it is, and, and I'm just me. Uh, you open up the box. Okay, remove, you take out the, the, the inside, what's inside. And you have this initial cover, which comes off. Behind it, you have some paperwork, warranty card, and so on and so forth. And then the IMs come right over there, all right? Underneath this lid, which you lift up. Uh, obviously you lift it up, you don't lift it down. We have then uh, the cable, the tips, and the tips, we have those famous uh, 10 high fi tips, but in grey colour, not the blues, and then some silicones. And you know, the reality is that they actually are not bad. The tips are actually not bad and they work, and, and I've, I've used them not only in the original one, but I also used them uh, when I was now here testing the, the P1 Max 2. 
but I ended up opting for the tips that I will be showing you in a second, okay? Anyway, that's the box. Uh, the only criticism, honestly, that I really have to, to make, and it's not a, a negative criticism, it's a positive criticism. I mean, this is $130. Um, it's available at, at uh, it's available in uh, at, at Linsol. It's available at Hi-Fi Go. Um, both are selling it for roughly the same price. So um, you know, when we're talking about one hundred and thirty dollars or one hundred thirty something dollars, I, I at least expect uh, you know a little bit more of a complete accessories package, and at least bring a case. I mean, we have the RTT ten, uh, which costs about sixty bucks, sixty over. You know, you can pick it up sometimes for sixty bucks on, when it's on sale, um, and you know brings a nice cable, brings a case, brings some nice tips. I mean, if, if they can do it, I'm sure enough I could also do it. Anyway, I ended up buying this case, which is a ten i five case, cost me I think it was seven dollars. So I've got my P one Max two. Uh, kept in the box which I think could have been more than supplied with the actual P1 Max 2 but hey, it is what it is I'm not gonna really make too much of a big deal as for the IEM itself here we go uh, it's got a nice face plate it's a nice design but I was actually from the pictures I got the sensation that this was um, that this was not uh, uh, flat and that it actually had some some texture to it. That's the uh, the perception that I got, that the faceplate had, was texturized. And no, it's just flat, it looks nice, okay. The cable is pretty decent. I actually measured the cable uh, and yes, a definite upgrade over the original cable that the P1 uh, brought. Um, and uh, uh, no need to change it, honestly, no need to change it. Unless you wanna go for balance because this is a 3.5. Uh, as compared here to the original, so you guys can see what I mean. Let me get both the left side. I mean, this is the original. This is the current model. Um, it's it's honestly exactly the same thing. I mean, uh, it's exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. I honestly, this th there's a little bit of a difference here around the plug, but uh, it's it's the same shell. Okay. Fits nicely. I'm using these uh, uh, Panon uh, tips. Uh, I like these tips. They they they're very similar to the KB Euro Sevens. Then the, the the difference I find between these tips and the KB Euro Sevens is that sometimes the KB Euro Sevens in the large size like this one have a tendency to create a dip there past five k, which can be beneficial or not. Uh, and these ones don't don't do that dip. They kind of maintain the frequency response more plateaued in that area and i prefer it i just prefer it that way especially with the p1 max i just prefer it that way anyway so what did i have here and of course i could have brought out a whole bunch of planars fortunately i've got the majority of them with very few exceptions um i've got here the original one which had that that unique tuning that they had which is an IM that I still hear it. Uh, I still I still listen to it quite often. Um, and I've got here the original. I've got here the subsequent retuned version. This one, um, it's difficult to say when they did the retune because, like I said, I've got five of them, um, and th three measured like this. And those three are in that period of 2021, 2022. And then in late 2022 is when I've got this one, and I've got one which I got last year in 2023, which measured the same way as well, and I have a different sound to the original one. So I'm 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 going to assume that that retune, that silent retune, was done sometime in 2023. Okay, uh, and at least with this unit that I have here of the P1 Max 2, okay, they basically graph the same. Period, and they sound basically the same. The difference that exists here and short of actually opening up the shell and seeing is uh, a difference that might be attributed to the fact that they mentioned that this is the 14.2 millimeter driver as be, as as has been used before, but it's a, the, a later generation of that driver, okay? Much like the MP145, the Shosi P20, uh, the Letcher, they use a 14.5, which they call Generation 3 driver. Um, this one, the original and the, the, the subsequent, let's say, retuned version, use the 14.2, much like the F1, from, the F1 Pro from Nice HTK. Although the F1 Pro, they also say it uses the, the latest generation of this driver, which I'm assuming is going to be the same as on the P1 Max 2. 
<coughs> another uh, planer that uses apparently the same driver is also the RTT10, while the Keyfind planer uses the same, or well, uses a driver which is probably the same as the one found in the MP145 and the Shows EP20. So we've effectively got here um, a driver that this 14.2 driver here. There's, it's, there's been some debate whether that's, this driver is better than the 14.5 the that you find in the Shosey and, and so on. And I'm going to, I'm going to um, take a big chance here by saying that ultimately I think that yes, I actually think that the 14.2 driver is a little bit better than the 14.5. Um, tuning tuning adjustments aside and so on and so forth, I actually think, and the reason why I think that is I, uh, somehow the tonality of the planars that have the 14.2 millimeter driver, um, it just sounds, uh, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's very difficult to, to actually try and convey in words because whatever I'm going to say, it's going to come across as, oh, and then the MP145 is not as good or, no. They've all got very good timbre and tonality. Okay, let's let's make that perfectly clear. But somehow the tonality of the F1 Pro, of the the the, the P1 Max 2, of the retuned P1 Max, they've got something about the tonality, uh, and I think it has to do uh, in part with the way that it's been tuned. That it just makes it a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more snappier in its note distinction. Okay as compared to something like the MP145 or the P20, which sound m warmer, more organic to a certain extent. And those two actually have a sound which is, um, you could say, an upgrade over the original P1 Max sound. The original P1 Max sound, which didn't have a lot of that planar vibe is what is being done to a certain extent here in the mp145 and the p20 they've got like a dd kind of feel to it a kind of like like i said an old school sound while the retuned version here of the of the original p1 max the the, the p1 max 2 the f1 uh, the rtt they've got um a, a tonality that is it's excellent but that you can pick up that it's got that little bit of that planar zing to it okay um anyway that's that's basically it fit is fine cable is fine uh sound well what can i say because i mean this is this is really going to be very easy and, and, and there's no need for me to drag this review for for half an hour or so on the sound of the p1 max 2 this unit that I have here compared to this unit of the retuned version is the same. It is a sound which approximates itself very much to the sound of the F1 Pro as well from Nice HDK or the RTT10. The difference that we find here in between the F1 and the P1 Max 2 is the F1 has got a little bit more energy in that 5, 6, 7K, which this doesn't have. But otherwise, the bass, the way the bass comes across, the transition into the mid, into the mids, into the mid bass first of all, then into the mids and the upper mids, very, very, very similar. I mean, it's really difficult. And what I'm basically saying by that is, if the original P1 Max was by virtue of its very neutral tune, maybe an iron that wasn't appreciated by many, uh, and uh, you know things like the S12 always got more 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 positive uh, reviews. The Timeless, even uh, the Raptco, because they, they were more dynamic, more energetic. Uh, I think that this uh, it, it falls within that group as well. I think this falls within that group of a safely tuned planar that has the planar vibe. While, for example, when we talk about MP145 or we talk about Shows EP20, we talked about a we talk about a a safely tuned planar that has a DD-like vibe. Now, I'm not talking about when you start modifying the MP145, like Mike Bruce uh, has done on the Short Bus channel, uh, and and then yes, then that does create or bring out more that planar. Uh, goodness, if you want, if you want to call it that way, and does change somewhat the character of the MP145. But what we're talking about here is stock as they are. So, great brace, very nice brace. It's it's capable of of, of rumbling when it has to rumble. Um, I, I think that the, the, the a lot of people sometimes have the perception, oh no, planos are going to struggle. No, 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 they don't struggle in the bass. Trust me. 
This is more than capable of, of going low and, and rumbling and, and having a really nicely done bass. Uh, if, if anything, uh, uh, planars, the majority of them at least, they take very well to even EQing if that is your thing. So it, it, can, it can definitely uh, move some air, okay? So the bass is excellent. The transition from the bass into the mid bass, excellent. I mean, songs like Unconditional from Soul Persona or Swept Away from Carol Dubok, more than enough dynamics. Trust me, the Riviera from Bob Zop, again, more than enough uh, uh, dynamics. House of Groove from Eugene Groove, plenty slam there, you know. Uh, symbols, uh, the 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 tech of the of the uh, everything. It's 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 clean. It, 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 I can't complain. I honestly cannot complain. I cannot say, oh no, uh, the the trumpets. Everything comes across uh, in the right energy, in the in the in the right um, tonality. Uh, okay. Uh, I will, however, say that yes. Uh, like is the case with many other IEMs, it is not only a little bit power hungry, and with a little bit more power, it does shine. With the Q15, for example, this well, any one of them, to be honest, sound absolutely beautiful. Um, but with the Q15, for example, and this is going to be a, a this is going to be a big statement what I'm about to say. With the Q15 connected to the original P1 Max, which I love, and connected now to the P1 Max 2. I actually prefer the sound of the P1 Max 2. The synergy of the Q15 with this is better than with the original. So that says a lot. Um, Analog from Soul Persona or Elephant from Carol Dubok, or you know, songs that I usually listen to. And if you go through my, my playlist called Across Ultima, you, 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 you can listen to these songs and you can listen to plenty of songs that I've got there. Um, or if you take something like I'll Come to You from Pete Belasco more than enough to give that nice rumble that that song has okay so no problem there um it, it's it's over from uh, from rocco uh rodamal it's it's, a, it's an edm electronic music again more than enough dynamics to to give that song the the, the nice engagement that it uh, that it, uh, it calls for and, and and can take some some volume mind you um so sonically I have absolutely nothing to complain. Bass is well executed, mids are well executed. Uh, occasionally, in some songs, some vocals, um, I found female vocals, I found it maybe, maybe uh, not harsh, but just a little bit, uh, a little bit too intense. Uh, for my liking um, but like I said it, it had very much to do with what was the source and with the Q15 for example I never experienced that but when I was using it with the TP50 I found that that a little bit too much um, with the Yuki not so much with the snowy night uh, I also found it a little bit too much so this is not even a fault of those particular uh, dongles or anything I think it's more down to the 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 way that they actually interact and synergize with the with the P1 Max 2 than anything else because I mean you guys know that I love the TP50 from EPZ I think it's a fantastic little dongle the same goes for the snowy night for my fool the same goes for the for the um, for the uh, Awun Yuki I mean those are or, or for the sim got the 4 the 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 4W uh, the Du 4X sorry um they are really, really good dongles. You know, there's no. Uh, the only look, if if I have to uh, say that there's a dongle that I don't think uh, will match, uh, of or, or if there's a dongle group that I think you might have to be a little bit more careful with how you match it with the P1 uh, with the P1 Max 2, or for example, the dongles that use some sort of ESS chip. And even then, it will depend because, for example, if it's an M15, it's fine. But if I connect it up to the the uh, Hades, the the Martha, um, uh, no, I, I didn't like it. Uh, so, look, you you, uh, you know, it, this is something that you have to pay attention to. Which again is something that you always should pay attention is tip selection. Definitely make sure that it fits you your ears properly. If you get a nice deep insertion, that will be the ideal. And then I would say, I would say choose even a either either a neutral sounding source or, or deck amp or, or dongle or a uh, or then a, a, a warmer sounding. Uh, that's at least my opinion for in my in my in my in my suggestion. If you go for something which is going to be a little bit brighter sounding, you might run the risk of it maybe becoming a little bit fatiguing in the long run. Okay. So, uh, just re re going back then quickly to what I was talking about. So, bass, mids, fine, uh, no treble, 
plenty of extension, plenty of detail, all the twinklies and sparklies that you need. Um, in terms of its technicality, timbre and tonality, very nice. Really enjoy the timbre and tonality of, of the P1 Max 2, much like I, I, I mean, it's P1 Max 2 and the retuned version of the P1 Max. I, I'm, I, I could be saying something which is a complete nonsense, but like I said, I've got two units of these ones, two units. And the two units and this new P1 Max 2, they measured basically the same, okay? And they sound the same. Um, you know, the differences that that occurred or that were occurring were down to a different tip that I was using initially. And when the moment I put the same tip as well, I couldn't I couldn't distinguish between them, okay? Um, so technicalities, sound stage, fine. Uh, imaging also fine. The soundstage I would have liked a little bit bigger, but you know, not not a, not a not a deal breaker. Uh, resolution perfect, detail retrieval perfect. Uh, technically very capable. It's it's technically a very capable. Uh, it, it's I go back to what I was saying earlier. It's a safely tuned uh, uh, planar that has. Uh, a, a mild planar vibe so as not to run the risk of becoming fatiguing okay now comparing it then with with these ones here and this is not going to be uh, uh, again a comparison of this one is now the best one and this is what the one you must go for and the rest is all garbage no compared to the original p1 max the difference exists and it's the same difference that existed already with the retuned version um, I feel that the majority of people will probably appreciate more the P1 Max 2 because of the way it's tuned than the original. Besides, you know, you run the risk of not even being able to pick up one like this, okay? However, if you do have a later version of the P1 Max, so if you have something that maybe you bought last year, I fear that you might not see any difference, like I haven't, and that it then doesn't make sense, okay? Compared to the F1 the F1, and I think it's down to the, ver to the fact that it's also got a metal shell. The F1 uh, seems to give a base which is ever so slightly more uh, uh, full-bodied um, and just a little bit snappier. But it, I'm, 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 I'll put my hands in the fire if I'm talking nonsense. I am almost positive it's down to the fact that the shell is metal and nothing to do with the drivers being, uh, you know, different or anything because they apparently are the same series drivers. Um, the thing that I uh, on the F1 Pro uh, uh, call attention to is that a little bit extra energy, you know, five, six, seven k, as opposed to this. While this one is more plateaued, more, you know, more smoother, this has got that little extra bit of energy. And if you are maybe a younger individual you know, a man or woman that still have their full hearing capabilities and not going deaf like I am, uh, you might might run the risk of finding this a little bit more fatiguing because you will get that more planar vibe out of it. As compared to the MP145 and the P20, uh, as you recall when I did the review of the P20, the, the, the P20 is very, very similar graphically, sound-wise, everything to the... Uh, to the uh, MP145. The MP145 has a, has a good good thing going for it, which is the fact that it's got different nozzles which convey different tunings, and it costs basically the same thing as the P1 Max 2. So, um, you know, if I look at it in that perspective, this one is the one that makes the most sense. On the other hand, it's got a bigger shell, which might not be, you know, uh, an easy fit for many. Uh, in terms of the sound, this has got more that safe tuning, which has got more that EDD vibe. It's not as detailed as this. However, having said that, if, because you've got the tuning nozzles, if you're in the mood to play around a little bit with it, then you can make it every bit as detailed as this and maybe even more. The MP145 is not one of the best uh, planars out there for no reason. I mean. Uh, especially now that you can pick this up for, like I said, hundred and just over hundred and forty dollars. Uh, I, I, I don't think it even reaches hundred and fifty dollars uh, from Hi-Fi Go, for example. Uh, it's it's honestly a no-brainer. It's uh, truthfully, it's a no no-brainer. Um, and much of what I said here applies to the P20 as well. Um, the P20, the shell is, uh, all, I mean, it's smaller, but somehow, somehow, uh, it's interesting. I actually find that the shell of the MP145 fits easier. Um, as compared to the, the P1 Max 2, the price is basically the same. 
accessories there are very meager however it does have a carrying case uh, which is you know uh, nice it's it's a, it's a nice a nice touch the cable i don't particularly like the cable i don't think it's a uh, you know a very very competent cable but uh, it's got tips it's got the cable it's uh, they kind of you know they they kind of come uh, strike a tie between the two of them um so i would say that out of all of these iems here this uh, positions it positions itself as a safely tuned planer uh, which doesn't really have any unique uh, or standout feature over its previous uh, model, especially the later, later ones. Um, so it's it's very similar. And then compared to its uh, competition or to its more closely priced competition, I mean, uh, F1 Pro a little bit brighter sounding, but it is forty dollars cheaper, roughly. Uh, difficult one here to to choose because this also has better accessories but if you're hard pressed for money i would say f1 pro and you can always play around a little bit with the tuning if you want as well so maybe that they might be the most sensible one but uh, it's all very relative compared to mp145 um again uh, you know the price is mostly uh, almost the same uh, it does have the issue that the size is a little bit bigger than the p1 max 2 and then might might be an issue for for fitment for some people but overall overall uh, this i still think it edges out the p1 max 2 still edges it out and the p20 uh, i would say comes tie with the p1 max uh, 2 because um, although sonically it is also very capable the rest is very similar to the p1 max 2 so look i think it, to to make things simpler the the p1 max 2 is a solid planar iem that uh, i think unfortunately uh, priced at where it is it, it's it's uh, it's got its work cut out for it okay it's got its work cut out for it um and that's it guys i'll show you now the graphs and we'll wrap it up okay hi guys and welcome now to the graph section here for the p1 max 2 let me just start by taking away some of these graphs so that we can start seeing things with a different light okay so i've taken all the graphs out okay let me start by showing you the graph of the original p1 max and this was the original very first ones that came out like in early 2022 and you can see everything sits within a window of like i said earlier roughly 670 bs are really tight i mean very neutral nice mid bass uh, it, it sounded really really good okay then at some point along the the life of um, the uh, p1 max they uh, they i assume they did a retune and we get this which is uh, the models which more which were that were available 2023 and 2020 uh, well still 2024 i guess and you can see it now changed completely the tuning uh, more significant bass uh, output uh, a more abrupt pin again with a peak at around 2k and a little bit more extension as well past uh, past the 10k barrier and uh, and then uh, now okay we receive or we get the the uh, p1 max 2 which is my apologies this one here number 19 so let's see if i can and that's it, number sorry not this one my apologies guys this one number 20 sorry so we get the p1 max 2 okay and the p1 max 2 if you look and let me just take away yeah the original one first of all if you look the p1 max 2 it basically graphs like the revised version of the p1 max um, I mean, if you know planar's left and right channel, they can have these these differences and they sound the same. And and honestly, I think it will be, you'll be very hard pressed to pick up a difference. So if you even told me that this was the same IEM with the left and right, you know what? I, I would accept it um, because that that's just the way it is. Um, I mean, let me just quickly show you here. The left and right channel of this particular set of p1 maxes so that you can understand what i'm saying so uh, p1 max this is one channel and this is the other channel and as you can see i mean that they are they are slight little differences there 
but they in essence are exactly the same you know that they, they sound so when i take the p1 max 2 okay let me just take away all these yeah so that we don't get confused and i compare it then uh the let's say the the the, the, the revised tuning of the original one with now what the p1 max 2 is they are in essence the same i am and they sound the same and honestly i i, I was I, I couldn't pick up a difference between them I, I really couldn't i really couldn't so p1 max 2 compared to p1 max the revised version got that out of the way compared to the original we got that out of the way as well uh let's compare it now with the f1 compared with the f1 uh, which is number 18 exactly compared to the f1 um very similar again i mean the differences that we have here in the base and everything it's just this area here that you notice the f1's got a little bit more energy okay between 5 and 8k um and uh, the fact that it's also got a metal shell it just gives the perception that the base is a little bit cleaner, a little bit more incisive. But look, the differences are minute, okay? Uh, um, you know, short of, uh, well, it, it's it very much the same I am. So I think it would be, it's going to be down to whether or not this area here is going to be a problem for you when you listen to music, okay? Compared to the P20 um, from Shozy, um the difference that you notice is that the p20 although it doesn't seem like it by what you see up top the p20 sounds a little bit darker just a little bit dark it sounds more like a dd um it, it's it's a it's a very small thing to look it's, it's basically what happens with as well with the high dis the mp145 you can see the high dis mp145 compared here with the p20 look that's <laughs> same thing um so the the, the high dis the mp145 compared with the uh, uh, P1 Max 2, uh, they are very similar sounding. It's just down to a difference in tonality uh, where I, I I think I will pin to more times towards the MP145, although the P1 Max, uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's it, this is very, very complicated, you know, if, um, because they are extremely similar sounding, okay? Uh, the advantage of the MP145 is you've got the tuning nozzle so you can play around a little bit and, and maybe even like I said earlier, you know, try the, the Mike Bruce um, tuning on, on the MP145, which will open it up because the truth is the MP145 and the Shows EP20, they sound, they both sound a little bit more warmer, a little bit more organic in comparison with the with the P1 Max 2. The P1 Max 2 sounds just a little bit more detailed, which, you know, it's it's actually quite surprising. Um, and there you have it guys, uh, I mean, there's really not much more that I can say, I mean, this is a, a safe tune, it's it's not going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to be offensive, and it isn't offensive, it plays really well, um, and, you know, it's it's fault or flaw or problem is that it's, it's uh, priced at a value which you have a lot of other very, very competent IEMs, you know, P20, MP145, uh, and for it to maybe be a little bit more uh, interesting for the end user, this is just my opinion. I think that they should have either offered nozzles as a, a, a calling uh, card, uh, obviously nozzles that worked, not just having nozzles and then not do anything like the case of the tensium origin where they don't change anything. So either have the nozzles or then alternatively the price should have been really ultra competitive. I remember there was a point that you could actually pick up the uh, the, the, P, the original P1 Max from um, from Hi Fi from sorry not from Hi Fi go from Rinsol you could pick it up for ninety nine dollars and at one point it was even eighty nine dollars um, and it was down to like I said I think a lot of people just didn't appreciate its tuning so I'm going to say that this for it to perhaps be a little bit more competitive overall uh, it should have a price of one hundred nine hundred fifteen dollars at the very most. So that there is a little bit of more of, of, of a more noticeable difference price wise to the others with which it competes uh, directly. Anyway guys, as always, like and subscribe, you know, click that, that button there, let's let's make this channel grow. Uh, I've been um, receiving a lot of very positive messages lately which have motivated me and, and, and showed me that I'm doing the right thing. So, you know, let's let's carry on uh, doing, doing 
you know your your part if you really do enjoy my content you know do put your your your, your like there and subscribe as well and um i, I will uh, try not only to um, to improve the quality of all of my videos but i'm actually going to start uh, thinking about um uh, you guys seeing my face more often um, i know i've got an ugly mug but anyway uh, i think it will be uh, uh, it will bring a different dynamics to the to the whole uh, the whole review thing, and you guys can at least put a face to what I'm saying, and, and can read my face and see whether or not I'm talking BS or if I'm being genuine about what I'm saying. All right. Anyway, guys, you have a good one. Take care now. Bye bye.